Today is, without doubt, one of the darkest days in the history of Met Police Service. Are they prejudiced and discriminatory? Yes, they are. It's absolutely despicable. Failure after failure. He should not have been a police officer. Sitting there watching porn, abusing women, vile jokes. It's a male-dominated environment. There's going to be others coming out of that. Wayne Cousins and David Carrick, the names of Met police officers known for all the wrong reasons. The two policemen convicted for murder and rape have caused a snowball effect of investigations into the institution's failures. The case review is the latest and most damning report. It concluded that vetting systems are poor and fail to guard against those who seek power in order to abuse it. The review has given the force two years to improve. Something can't be changed. If it can't be fixed, then reform it completely. I don't think the Metropolitan Police breeds discriminatory behaviour but I don't think it's been doing anything like enough to set standards and to stop the wrong people from entering into the Met Police. Sir so Mark Rowley, the new commissioner, he's got an enormous job to turn this massive organisation around which has got a legacy of lapse and lax standards. The Met have got a lot of catching up to do because already they've got officers that have been through a vetting process that has been less than adequate and therefore you've got officers that are misogynistic, racist, homophobic, criminals with badges. Um, they're the ones that you're gonna to have to try and root out. But once they're in, it's far more difficult for the organisation to target them unless they come to notice for something and then suddenly find themselves under investigation. Carrick and Cousins are both very, very clear examples. Lady Casey's report explored how the toxic culture within the Met has been allowed to thrive. The review heavily criticised two firearms units in particular, the Specialist Firearms Command and the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command, also known as PADP. This is the unit where Wayne Cousins and David Carrick both worked. It's described as a dark corner of the Met. Drawing on my experience of working within policing, what I know of um, firearms units is they tend to be uh, male-dominated. A lot of it is very routine work, standing outside buildings for days on end and nothing happening. They take their breaks together, they work as a team, and they become quite a closed culture. They've said they're bored sitting now. They, they've, they've got nothing to do. They have four hours on, four hours off. And in that time, they're sitting there watching porn, they're abusing women, they're having vile jokes. They're glorified bodyguards with firearms. I know two senior female officers that gone into that command to try and change it. And one went sick with stress, and I'm talking superintendent level, and another one just couldn't change it because, as I say, the constables rule the roost. That as soon as you come in, they're already embedded within a toxic culture. And even if you come in as a newly promoted sergeant, you'll suddenly find yourself being part of that group because you, you haven't got a choice. As concerns rise over certain units, problem profiles are created to help understand high-risk issues and emerging crimes. It's someone who's quite often the life and soul of the party. It's quite often the person that's, you know, stepping forward to help other colleagues. It's quite often the person who sometimes in social occasions stands a little bit too close. So it's kind of little kind of micro behaviours um, that actually you've got a, just a sense about someone it's not quite right. And at that point, it's really important that police officers feed that information into the professional standards department. That kind of intelligence can then be worked up in an appropriate way to check whether or not there's anything going on. And by that, I mean obvious things. Are they accessing the false computers to get victims of domestic abuse or sexual abuses, names and addresses? Are they repeatedly visiting particular victims' homes? Are they sending repeated text messages to particular victims? All of those are warning signs. So why aren't officers coming forward to report these behaviours? According to former staff members, people who flag issues end up facing repercussions themselves. What happens on many occasions is Managers don't have the courage to actually challenge those individuals. Um, the whistleblowers suddenly find themselves being isolated, they get victimised. If they're part of a team and there's other officers that behave in that way as well, 
they'll almost like gang up against them. Uh, that individual will suddenly find they're being subjected to victimisation, intimidation, and then next thing you know, they're being subjected to discipline, uh, performance matters, and sometimes it can go as far as they're being investigated for other matters because it's been sent to a higher unit. And that is actually a very common trait that has been identified through the Casey Review. In cases where concerns have been raised about an officer, the METS vetting process allows individuals to move to different units without further vetting or investigation. This loophole allows police officers to jump ship without further questioning. Men who come into policing in order to predate on vulnerable victims are extremely clever. They will use their guile uh, to be able to avoid detection and they will be manipulative. They're pretty lightly to be able to kind of sense if someone's onto them. And then it's completely down to them, you know, they just apply for a job in another force or maybe in another industry, which is rather like policing, and they get out before they're going to be caught. We've got to be realistic with the revetting processes, but I think what they need to do is embed something into the yearly appraisals. The complaint that we don't have the resources and we don't have the time. It's, those days are gone and there's got to be a number of set questions which if it's found that they've lied in any way, shape or form, there's got to be a process where they are automatically sacked. Even though reviews into the Met and other police departments are ongoing, Mark Rowley, the Met Commissioner, continues to state that the situation is bound to get worse before it gets better. Lifting the stone and revealing painful truths will not be resolved overnight. We're never going to weed out completely homophobic, racist or misogynistic officers because what you have to remember is police officers are made up of society and they come from society. Some will already come in with those ideologies, some will already come in with those biases, some will already come in because they want the power of the badge. But the place that policing is in at the moment, particularly the Metropolitan Police, it could not be in a worse place. Common decency and proper and appropriate behaviour expected of you or I absolutely is expected of a police officer. We know that the concerns that the Met have in terms of its culture are not solely confined to the Met. There will be concerns about pockets of toxic culture in other forces in England and Wales.